Hi, this is Paul Farmer. Today I want to talk about something a bit different, about, I suppose, a technical aspect of quality assurance, and that's calibration. Now, many people just think about, oh, how much is it going to cost and get the calibration in place? But they don't really think about what it means, what it means to have a calibrated instrument, what it means to have a calibrated tested piece of equipment, what it means to have calibrated controls in place. And I find it's not just auditors that, that don't necessarily get it. it it's, it's the people doing the work. Even the UCAS laboratory people, they, they understand what the principles are. They know what's needed, but they don't necessarily advise you on why you want to do it, rather than the technical aspects of this is what you need to do. And scientists think, well, oh, we're subcontracting it. So they've done it. They've done the calibration as we asked them. But if you don't give them the right spec to do the calibration against, well, will they meet your needs? Probably not. So there's three things to think about. You've got precision, accuracy, and linearity. And the one I want to talk about today is linearity. Now you can see the graph behind me. So we've got a straight line, which is what you want the response to be. And you've got the curve, which is can be what you're actually really achieving with the instrument that you're trying to do the calibration for. So when you're looking at who you're going to get to do your calibration and how many points within the, calib within the um, assessment they're going to do, say, for example, you're looking at doing 15 to 25 degrees C on a temperature probe. Now it applies just the same to um, pressure ratings as we've got behind us or something else. But you might find the precision and accuracy, you can have an offset for your accuracy and hopefully the precision is really tight. But you need to allow for that in the way that you handle the results. So maybe you've got a uh, an offset for your accuracy. So maybe you're, you're bringing it up by half a degree or something, or whatever it was in the assessment. And then the precision, well, hopefully you've got it tight. If not, maybe, maybe you need to do something about it. But linearity is something that people often forget. So how do you consider, how do you look at linearity? Well, if you do a single point calibration, you can't. Because the line goes from where to where. It's not a line if it's a single point, is it? So I always look for at least three points in a calibration, and preferably five, but three points is a minimum. Okay, so you're doing the calibration as received, you're doing the calibration as left once they've done any adjustments that they're making. Now, if you look at a single point, and that's the midpoint <clears throat> of where you do your measurements, so look at the point here on the graph A and the actual um, difference between the result and what should be the straight line. So that's telling you at that point it's out. But if you only did a test at the point where the two lines cross, then you're not going to know that you've got that difference between the response of um, the instrument and what you're actually saying it's showing you what the number is getting out <clears throat> no the, the the condition versus the output so when you look at three points well say you've got the two crossover points well that's nice and then in the midpoint you've got this difference so you know you've got some issue with the linearity of your instrument so what do you do well you add a couple more points to see how much it's out by and then you can use that to know, well, <clears throat> when I'm taking the results from this, I've got this potential error. And you need to take the, into account, is that error too much for what it is that you're measuring? So if you're doing, if you're looking at 15 to 25 degrees C and you don't worry about the decimal point and you've got an error of 0.1, then you're not going to be that bothered. If you've got an error in that range of two degrees, then you are going to be bothered because it's going to impact the adjustments that you make to your equipment because your temperature monitor is going to show you that you're out of spec when it's in spec. 
or it's in spec when it's out of spec. And, and you're potentially affecting the pharmaceutical products that you're storing. If you're in a food situation, maybe the food products you're storing. But if whatever it might be, however you're using the, the calibrated equipment, whatever you're using it to control, make sure you understand the detail behind the calibration that you're doing. Always do at least three points. Now, if you're doing 15 to 25, I'll stick with the same example. Do you want to have the lowest point at minus 70 degrees C, the midpoint at 20 degrees C, and the top point at 300 degrees C? Well, clearly you don't. You want to have something that's representative of the range in which you're using the equipment and the range in which you want to know the results. So one point that, um, that comes up regularly is how far out do we go? You say, well, how far out would be acceptable? And you'd need to know the actual data to be able to make a decision. So if you're doing an out of spec uh, or a, a, a non, probably a deviation with temperatures to assess whether the product can be accepted or not, and you don't know the accuracy of your data because you've only done 15, 20, and 25, but it actually went down to 12. Well, is that 12 or is it 10 or is it, is it 14, depending on whether you've got any issues with the linearity? Because the other thing you need to think about, we've got this curve behind us, which is a nice one, but it could be that the curve goes up, down, up, down, or you may have a flat, point, a flat portion in the middle and it tails off at both ends. You don't know. So you have to assess the full range. So you look at where you, do, where you want it to be, but also some amount outside that range as well to be able to determine accuracy, precision, and linearity across the range in use. Now, if you're outside that range in use, then you cannot rely on your data. So I hope that makes things clear, and I hope you'll consider this next time you're looking at a calibration report from your contractor, because usually that's the case. We're getting these results done. We're getting the test done by subcontractors. And if that subcontractor doesn't act, ex, doesn't understand the industry, they won't necessarily advise you of the right information to get the right data. So I hope that hope you find that useful. Uh, and I would appreciate any comments or feedback that you might have, and maybe any help for some of the people that are watching this. Maybe just feed them back and, and give them some guidance that could help. Or maybe your experiences too. That's it for today. It's Paul Farmer. Talk to you soon.